So we don't jump. What does the bell sound like? <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome to the mayor's debate on 900 CKBI. Sorry, Brent. <laughs> There's four. Good afternoon and welcome to the Mayor's Debate on 900 CKBI. I'm Brent Bosker and I'll be your moderator for today's program. In studio, I'm pleased to welcome Greg Dion, Dean Link and Jim Scarrow. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Before we begin, let's outline the rules and the uh, format for the program. Candidates will have the opportunity to make an opening and closing statement. The first four questions today were provided ahead of time to our candidates. The remainder of the questions are from the public and will be and were selected for the show. Candidates will have one minute to answer questions and if given the opportunity they will have 30 seconds for rebuttals. A bell will ring indicating when you have 15 seconds remaining. You will hear a double ring indicating when your time is expired and of course if you go over your time you will hear my voice telling you guys to stop politely. Following questions, there'll be we will open things up on the floor where candidates will have a chance to uh, question each other. So we'll start with opening statements. Each of you has 90 seconds to determine today's order. Names are drawn from a hat to Mr. Dion. You are first. Uh, thank you. And first of all, I'd like to thank you for having this debate because it's important that we get the message out to the public. Uh, seeing we have 90 seconds, I'm going to shorten my opening remarks just to talk about well, what I feel the future is, and that's what I'm talking about is the future, not the past, uh, because this term is for four years, and uh, my main goal is the growth of the community. I believe if we grow the community with good paying jobs that every other sector will. The other thing is I want to bring the community back to City Hall. I want to uh, build a team in Council and together work with my team and the community to better our community. Uh, we have some downfalls. Uh, we have infrastructure issues. I'm pleased uh, that Bradwell announced uh, $2.5 billion in infrastructure, but I believe now is the time we get a plan ready so when the province rolls out the rules for that, that we're ready to get our fair share. And I think in the past we've been a little short on that, and I believe that we have to be in the government's front and center to get it together. I am going to reach out to the community to be part of the decision making, part of the priorities of our community. Because sometimes as councillors and mayors, uh, we think we know what the community wants, but sometimes we don't. And I'm going to encourage people to get involved and call. And I'd like to thank you again for this opportunity and look forward for the rest of the debate. Thank you, Mr. Dion. Next up is Mr. Link. Thank you, Brent. The upcoming election will be based on three main issues, these being accountability, transparency, and safety. City Hall must be made to be fiscally responsible. We are the guardians of the public purse, and as such, spending must be prioritized and justified to get the most value for Prince Albert citizens. We have many pressing needs, including infrastructure, policing, affordable housing, and debt reduction. It is my preference, and hopefully the new councils, to cut costs rather than raise taxes. Are there legitimate reasons for not having advertising on our city buses to help defray costs? We will be transparent and ready to answer the public honestly and in a timely manner. The bridge fiasco and the water disaster are just two incidents that the present administration have failed in this regard. We will provide a full explanation on both. Public safety and crime reduction is a major concern to our citizens. They are demanding more be done in this regard. These are all obtainable goals by cutting the fat within our civic administration and redeploying assets to get the most value for your dollar. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Link. And finally, Mr. Scarrow, 90 seconds. Uh, thank you very much, Brent, and thank you to Rocco Radio for providing this time uh, for Mr. Link and Mr. Dion and myself to uh, separate us as uh, candidates uh, for the office of mayor. I just uh, want to say, first of all, that I'm pleased the other candidates are now supportive of my leadership in regards to a new Victoria Hospital. We agree that it's needed. It's just how we're going to fund it. And I think that working with uh, Regina and uh, with Ottawa, uh, encompassing the wide area this hospital serves that we'll be able to negotiate I think you know a, a, a pretty fair deal in terms of financing the hospital but it's nice to have everybody aboard it's a good time for Prince Albert record uh, real estate sales uh, month after month the last two months have been the highest I think on record 
uh, home values. If you own a home, it's increased in value. The average sale price uh, six years ago was $99,000. It's now, at the last month, was $250,000. Uh, we have record-breaking new home, uh, industrial, uh, commercial, uh, and institutional construction. We've already surpassed at the end of September, uh, pardon me, at the end, yes, at the end of September, uh, last year's record year of construction. We now have a full quarter. We're 20 percent already ahead of last year. That's pretty amazing stuff. We uh, want to be, uh, continue to be the voice of the city and uh, part of the image of the city of Prince Albert that the mayor's office brings. Uh, I really want to uh, welcome the new members of council and went, uh, after election day. Thank you, Mr. Scarroll. All right, let's move into our first question, gentlemen. Number one, the recent failure with the Diefenbaker Bridge has restarted the debate for having a second bridge. What is your position on a new bridge? Where should it go? And how would the city pay for it? Mr. Link, your first answer. Of course we need another bridge. That goes without saying. The fact of the matter is that since the study shows it to be built between the airport and the Cecil Ferry Road, the city will have very little input and by the same token very little need to provide many dollars as since it will be for the most part in the RMs. That being said, I would continue the work of lobbying the senior governments to move quickly on this project. It is essential for the continued development of the North as well as providing a dangerous goods route and an alternative for our citizens as shown by what we have gone through in the past year. I am in favor of looking at all scenarios including a P3, a toll type crossing, etc. The fact remains that the province will have the final say. My hope is that they can be convinced of the need for speed. Any talk of shovels in the ground by 2016 by some sort of private consortium is totally irresponsible. Aside from my opponent releasing no details to this point, nobody from government in Regina has given any credence whatsoever to what, if anything, Councillor Dion has promised or should I say guaranteed. Thank you, Mr. Lincoln. Just a reminder, uh, each candidate has 60 seconds to respond to these questions. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Skirrell, you're next. Uh, please. Okay. The recent failure with the Diefenbaker Bridge has restarted the debate for having a new bridge. What is your position on a new bridge? Where should it go? And how would the city pay for it? Well, uh, you know, we don't have to go very far in history to, to find out if you don't repair a bridge. In Minneapolis, a similar bridge collapsed, uh, 13 people killed, uh, 98 injured. This bridge uh, is, 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 is not uh, anything but vital to the north and to the south. I think we've convinced the, the provincial government that, that that is indeed the case. They've made, we've made it a priority with the government, uh, working with our municipal partners, uh, business and industry. We have over 1,700 letters of support, 70 resolutions passed by municipal bodies. Uh, and uh, the Premier has indicated just Tuesday that he sees it on the radar along with the Saskatoon Bridge and the bypass in Regina. He mentioned Prince Albert as in need of a second bridge. He's here on Tuesday, and I look forward to his response. Thank you, Mr. Scarrow. Mr. Dion? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, we're all in agreement that we need a new bridge. And um, I'm pleased that uh, Mr. Link knows where it's going because uh, I understood that the uh, uh, province was conducting a study to get the final location and, and where it's going to go. And I do believe that it will be under construction by 2016, especially after Mr. Wall announced $2.5 billion in infrastructure and named both Saskatoon and Prince Albert in need of a bridge. So I'm, I'm, I'm putting my reputation and my career on stake by saying 2016 because I think that's a reasonable goal because it does take time to build a bridge. And it will be funded by the province. It's going to be in the RM and that's one of the reasons that we push it because we cannot afford to participate with all the demands that we have. And I really look forward to the location because that's going to give us a great opportunity because that's where I believe we should put light and heavy industrial around the roadway that leads to the new bridge. And I believe that should also be part of the city. Thank you, Mr. Dion. Question number two. Despite successful initiatives like the community mobilization model, crime continues to plague our city. And do you consider our streets safe? And what would you do to make the city safer? Mr. Scarrell, you've got the first word. Well, Prince Albert's crime statistics for September show a reduction for the most serious crimes, that being those crimes where a person is a victim, such as robbery, assault, or bodily harm, down by 28% over last year to date. Year to date, 28% down. And let me repeat that. These are tax against people, most feared crime. 
General occurrence is down 7.8%, remarkably, after years of increases, calls to the police station are actually trending down 2.5%. We're not alone in, in this province with a negative crime image. We need to, to work as we are with our, you know, world attracting hub and core community mobilization. Prince Albert is making waves. And in the whole world of crime prevention, this is the one that appears to be the most successful. Thank you, Mr. Scarroll. Mr. Dion, you're next. Well, I want to talk about the crime rates. As the mayor says, uh, lots of people said yesterday I agreed with him quite a few times. Well, when you talk about stats, the stats say it. Our crime is down. But when we talk about crime rates, that crime rate is high in the province of Saskatchewan. It's just not a Prince Albert problem. It is our challenges today. We have to deal with our youth. We have to deal with poverty. We have an addiction problem, a big addiction problem in the city. And the province isn't helping us by looking at extending more bar hours. We don't need that in our city. The other fact that we have to deal with is one-third of the people that we deal with in our city come from outside our city. And that's why today the province funds 18 officers. But that's not enough when you think our force is 100. You figure out a third, we need 25 officers funded by the province. And I'll be working on that because that's part of the strategy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Don. Mr. Link? Prince Albert, it would appear, has only been moderately successful in reducing reported crime. The key word is reported. Many of our citizens have just given up. I give our hardworking members of our police service credit for working in a profession which at many times seems thankless. That being said, our citizens expect and are entitled to the best police service we can give them under the financial restraints they have. I firmly believe in cameras in high crime areas. These have worked very successfully throughout the states, Europe and other Canadian cities. The majority of people I have talked to make no bones about it. They do not feel safe on our streets, in our parks and even our commercial developments. Perhaps it is perception, but whether or not must be dealt with. Another area of policing that needs immediate corrective attention, as we have all witnessed, is our traffic situation. I find it ludicrous that Councillor Dion suggests changes to the police commission. He has sat there for years without bringing this up. If he had wanted to change so badly, why hasn't he mentioned it? Funny what an election campaign does. Mr. Dion, would you like uh, to rebut to that? Well, first of all, to make changes, you have to be in the position to make changes. And as a member, it's just like a member of council. The way the police commission is going to change, when you run for mayor, you're running on a mandate. And people support my change to the commission by adding two more civilians, adding the chair being a civilian. And so you have to be in the position to make change. And maybe Mr. Link will learn that in the future. Thank you, gentlemen. Question number three. According to the latest census, Prince Albert's population saw moderate growth. What, should, what would you do to attract more business and families to the city? Mr. Dion, you're first. Well, and this is my main platform. I believe if we grow our community, every aspect of our community grows. Housing, sales, restaurants, and everything else. We have to really get a, a, on to economic development. And we can start by, we hear everything that's happening in the north. It's going to grow. This is going to happen. So we have to put a, what I call together a hit list to find out what resources are going north of us and go see their head offices and say, listen, this is Prince Albert. We have all the amenities you need to raise your family here. We have land. We have an airport that you can build warehouses and ship out at the city of Prince Albert. What is it going to take for you to invest in our community? I also believe we have to go to all the business shows that are hosted in around our area, similar to the city of Melfort. Every show I've been to, the city of Melfort is there selling themselves. So I think if you want your community to grow, you have to get out in the, and sell it. And I'm going to ask the community to assist me because I'm going to say, similar to the hospital, I'm going to ask people to join me when I go to Ottawa to get what we need. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dion. Mr. Link, you're next. Prince Albert does much to offer, and for our population not to have risen significantly is worrisome, given what we have going for us. Perhaps referring back to the previous question may give us some insight. If we can bring the crime rate down significantly or improve people's perceptions of it will certainly help. Developers have told me that City Hall in Prince Albert has put up too many roadblocks and impediments in the way. This has to end. We have to be a lot more proactive in dealing with potential industries and business relocating to Prince Albert along with their employees and families. We can't wait for them to come to us. We have to seek them out. Sell Prince Albert to them. We have to show them we have a stable workforce, a tax-friendly environment for both commercial and residential, as well as a full range of services, including ample service land, 
Tax incentives are often mentioned and we should take an open mind to this if it makes fiscal sense. Much as I hate to say it myself and many others feel that to date the Green Industrial Park has been a disappointment. Believe you me and our industry leaders, if Prince Albert doesn't jump at an opportunity, another city will. Thank you, Mr. Link. Mr. Scarrell, you're next. Yes, uh, you know, uh, by working with the hospital, we've created through, uh, three special services, uh, youth addiction, brief detox center, and family addiction. That's 105 jobs. Uh, if you also add in the Pineview Terrace, that's 105 new jobs that we've created. You can be pretty blind and not to see what's happening in Prince Albert. We're exploding. We're, we're booming. We're attracting uh, new businesses daily. I meet with uh, and have met with a new retailer who is, chose Prince Albert be, because of what we have here for, uh, for his industry, first of all, for his business, but also all of the things that we have in our community, the Performing Arts Center, Alfred Jenkins uh, Fieldhouse, uh, the um, Prince Albert Raiders as a hockey team, all of these things bring us together as a community. And by the way, if you're the mayor, you probably want to work on a pulp mill for Prince Albert. Been there, done that. And uh, next year, uh, we'll grow from the 50 uh, jobs right now to over 250 when the pulp mill is brought on stream once again. And thank you, Mr. Scarrell. Question number four, what changes, if any, would you like to see to how the city is run and how would you do this? Mr. Link, you're first. City Hall has to be transparent. I have said that within 90 days of being elected, the public books will be open for all to see. Where we stand in terms of reserves, debt, p pension funds and future commitments will dictate where we can go. I state once again my preference is to avoid tax increases by cutting costs. When you can't run your household on what you make, do you go to your boss and ask for more money? No, you cut costs. This is something this mayor and council have refused to do. Increasing taxes, hiking service charges, adding levies, and adding surcharges. All f civic facilities must pay for all utilities, factoring them into their budgets as proper accounting practices demand. No boards, departments, external agencies will receive any monies unless up-to-date financials are filed with the finance department. I'm sure the citizens of Prince Albert are knowledgeable enough to understand that we cannot continue to live beyond our means. What with huge infrastructure needs upcoming? There is fat to be cut at City Hall and I envision being able to, along with Council, make those cuts. Thank you, Mr. Link. Mr. Scarrell, you're next. Well, I just want to correct on the pension funds. Uh, we're a member of MEP, Municipal Employees Pension Plan. It's 100% funded. There's no problems whatsoever. Uh, and I, I want to have that corrected right away. Uh, again, uh, this is a very complex uh, organization in the city of Prince Albert, some 500 employees employing a large number of professional people, dedicated people who know what they're doing. Our job as uh, council is uh, to work with them, uh, to provide guidance, set policy. Uh, you know, we, in this, this term of office, we have uh, reduced debt. We have uh, brought on new revenue streams as a result of uh, new business, uh, particularly in the Cornerstone area. If you think of $1 million on the north side, another million on the south side, that's the kind of dollars that come into the tax base when you have that kind of attraction. We're looking at uh, the diamonds uh, as an industry to, to grow our community, as well, of course, as the Prince Albert pulp mill and uh, all the benefits that that will bring. Thank you, Mr. Scarrell. Mr. Dion? Well, one of the main changes I'd like to see at City Hall that we have to transform council into a working team. When you get a working team, you can look at all the positives that's happened in our community, and that's how you move our community forward. We can start with our budget process by making it longer, asking the citizens of PA what's their priorities. Lots of times as council and mayors, we think we know what those priorities are, but sometimes we're wrong. We don't live in a perfect world, as Mr. Link has indicated. We don't, and people are going to make mistakes. We're human. But the key is that we see beyond that and we continue to move our community forward in a positive aspect. And I believe by bringing the community back to City Hall that we'll be able to move our community forward. We have lots of professionals out there and lots of knowledge and lots of interest in our community. We just have to get out there and move it forward on a positive basis, not be a negative. Negative doesn't get you anywhere. Positive gives you growth. Thank you, Mr. Dion. That brings an end to the first portion of our questions. When we come back after this break, we'll uh, take some questions from the public. You're listening to the Mayor's Debates on 900 CKBI.